Hello everyone. This is Luca van Horn. He is a very dear little boy in a game called Beacon Pines. As you can see, he's got these cute little antlers here and his ears are really nicely done. You just want to tweak them. He's even got a little bit of fuzz in the ears. I was a bit hesitant about um, ordering a Luca when I saw a message pop up that the developers had decided they wanted to offer a plushie. Being a very small developer, they obviously had to use a, a third party to make and distribute the plushie for them. And these days, I have noticed that the quality of many plushies, especially the mass-produced ones, has really gone downhill. I'm very cautious when ordering a plushie, but I had a feeling this one might turn out all right, and Lucas certainly did. He's very nicely finished, incredibly soft, lots of cute detail, just like in the game, and he comes with a little identification tab saying Luca Plushy by Hiding Spot Games, and that's the developer. The artist is Ilza Harting, also mentioned on here, and it's got a little number at the bottom saying only 416 made. So I assume that once the pre-orders closed, that was the number they made. Just in case you're curious, the company that made Luca and shipped him out is called Makeship. So Luca is settling in very nicely with the rest of the plushy crew there. And I want to talk a bit about the game Beacon Pines. I played it last year, almost a year ago, on my Xbox. It was on Game Pass. And I think it still is on Game Pass. Now, the game is also available, apart from Xbox, on the Nintendo Switch, but not on PlayStation, unfortunately. I had intended to show you the game a bit when I'd finished playing it, because I was really enthusiastic about it, but through some very unfortunate mishap, the footage I recorded on the Xbox had some serious audio problems that made most of the footage basically unusable. I left it. But when I got Luca, I went back and had another log, and there are just a few short clips that were salvageable, which I used to put together a very short sort of overview of the game, uh, looking just at a few aspects, not a full review. So apologies in advance for the not terribly good um, audio quality, but I think you should still be able to enjoy the video. So what is Beacon Pines about? The developer describes the game thus. Beacon Pines is a cute and creepy adventure game within a magical storybook. You play as both the reader of the book and its main character, Luca. Explore the town to find word charms and use them to change the course of fate. Now, some people have described Beacon Pines as a cozy horror game, and that's actually not a bad description. The town is populated by characters who are all highly anthropomorphic creatures, like Luca. Lots of furries. If you like furries, this might be a game for you. Let's have a look, dive in, and get a first impression of Beacon Pines. I played Beacon Pines when it came out last year uh, on the Xbox via Game Pass. It's also available on the Nintendo Switch and on PC. It is age-rated T for Teens. 
Here we see Luca and his two close friends. So let's dive in and uh, just have a quick look at some of the aspects of the game. Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. And now we're into the game action. Isn't that charming? Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. Now this is rather unusual, having the narrator interspersing comments while the characters are talking. Normally I do not like that and find it a very clunky excuse for poor storytelling, but in this case I think it actually works and is certainly helped by the narrator having a very nice and soft uh, voice acting timbre and style. Now you will see um, the structure of the gameplay which is based around puzzles and around words which or phrases which you need to uh, collect. Far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself, but change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. So here you see the very simple but very effective uh, mechanism of how to navigate through the game. And inevitably you will run into many uh, cul-de-sacs in order to find the one route that will take you to the true ending. Kids are just gonna love these words, aren't they? In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Now let's look at the character models in more detail. They tend to have rather large heads, what I call baby heads. Uh, those tend to appeal more to our uh, parental instincts, uh, which is probably very appropriate in a game like this. Uh, to be honest, it took me some time to get used to them. It's not what I would normally go for or fall in love with um, straight away. But as I played the game and became more and more drawn into that world, I just grew to like the um, character presentation in a slightly uh, goofy way, I suppose. The writing is really excellent in this game. You get to know the characters well. The writers know exactly how to convey personality and also when to shut up and let the action speak for itself. Chapter 3 Finding a Friend The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. A faint 
electronic sound floated in the air. Beacon Pines has been referred to as a cosy horror game and on the whole I would agree with that. While it all looks um, very cute and goofy, it does get more and more creepy and even a bit frightening in places. Yes, so there are definite um, science fiction horror elements there. How long does it take to unravel the whole story? About six to eight hours if you want to do everything, I would say. And I obviously did. I didn't want to miss a moment of what happened in Beacon Pines. The decisions you have to take in that book with that tree, uh, they're called turning points and there are 11 of them in the game and they lead you to 13 endings and only one of these endings will then lead you to the true ending. So there is a bit of um, detective work and exploration and discovery required and it's all a huge amount of fun. Lots of good themes are built into the game, especially for younger players, without coming across as too preachy or pearls of wisdom you have to learn. Uh, no, it all grows organically out of the events. One of the reasons why I liked this game so much is that the puzzles are uncomplicated. Not once did I have to resort to consulting an online guide, and that made me very happy. There is no subterfuge or deliberate concealment about the puzzles, and I really appreciated that. Uh, just straightforward detective work. The book's tree of story arcs is all you need to find your way through. So, what did you think? If you haven't played it yet, do you think you might like to? I had a great time with it. I started it and I didn't stop until I had finished. Thank you very much for watching. Please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye bye.